many of you may be wondering how to identify rotation a funnel cloud or even a tornado on radar In today's tutorial i'll be going over some basic tips on how to identify legitimate rotation or even a tornado on radar in this tutorial, we'll be primarily focusing on the Morton, Texas tornado that happened not too long ago on May 23rd of 2022. Let's take a look at this supercell more in depth. So just keep in mind, by the way, that this is a discrete supercell. What that means, it's a unique individual cell. Now, in some instances, we do see tornadoes with lines of storms, which don't ever look anything like this, but they very well can also produce tornadoes, usually in the brief and weak form. When there are discrete supercells like this one, they very well can produce in some instances long tracked or even large tornadoes here's a look at the cell though you can see here's the large hail core at the northern part of the storm that is a typical supercell usually going to produce some very large hail in this instance it was as high as tennis balls to baseball sized hail now here you can see also the little hook that's your little hook echo and also the inflow going to the storm which helps spur up that rotation and you can usually see inflow and in these little breaks into the storm kind of where this almost looks like a debris ball almost it's not really a debris ball most likely in this instance instance but at least shows that little inflow going into the storm and also you can tell that's likely to be a rain wrapped tornado because where the tornado likes to sit in the in these instances is usually somewhere over here again on the southwest part of the storm somewhere embedded where that inflow is uh usually in this instance though it would likely be a rain wrapped tornado and hard or at least difficult to see you might have one important thing to note with velocity radars is that the reds are indicating winds going away from the radar and greens indicate winds going towards the radar now why is that important well, it indicates if we have some sort of rotation. Now, grays are typically neutral, and usually when we have gray in between a red and green area, that usually represents broad rotation. More on that in just a moment. Here's a look at the more Texas tornado, though. There was possibly two tornadoes at the given time. Uh, you can see two very tight areas of rotation, one right here and as well as one right over here, both of them right next to 214 over near Morton, Texas. Here are the winds going away from the radar, and here are the winds going towards the radar. And you can see the very, uh, very defined tightening of the rotation in both spots and even here you can see the very tight area of rotation indicating actually possibly two tornadoes with this one cell so you can start to see after about five to ten minutes of this storm ongoing the rotation doesn't seem to be nearly as strong and how is that being depicted well you can see that the, again the reds going away from the radar right here and then you can see the greens going towards the radar are going the other direction but you see all these grays in between there's no tight area of rotation that we see here that would really indicate that there's still a tornado on the ground nowhere in those velocities is there really a tight area of rotation i might also be wondering where does a tornado usually occur in a supercell storm well in most instances they will sit in that hook area so you can see that this is the example storm here um, again the inflow going into the storm right here usually a tornado likes to sit kind of down here in the southwestern port part of the storm usually to the east of the heaviest of the rain so you can kind of see here here's your large hail core heavy rain all up and down this area usually that tornado though is going to try to sit somewhere in that area um, again on the southwestern portion of this ongoing storm. So how do you tell if there's a tornado on the ground with a particular storm? Well, this is one way to tell. Now, here's an area of tight rotation. This was from the Wisconsin tornado back in June 15th of 2022. So not very long ago from when I'm making this video. You can see that here's the winds going, uh, again, toward the radar. Here are the winds going away from the radar. And again, your very tight area of rotation is located right about there. Again, that's just North Venter State 90. And again, you can see the very tight area of rotation, both colors intermingling with each other, basically really showing that there's a very tight rotation with this cell now but if you're not really confident that you know that there's at least a tornado on the ground let's go to the correlation coefficient matching up exactly with that rotation you can see frame by frame there is very well at least some sort of debris being lifted up into the atmosphere now when you're looking at a correlation coefficient you're going to see a lot of these reds greens yellows this is likely hail now in a lot of cases you might see this uh with what usually is a whole lot of rotation in these areas but you will usually see some hail in some portions of the storm that might be what this is in indicating another way to tell again this is right over where the tight rotation is that's indicating fairly large debris blue colors especially this dark blue will represent most likely some sort of debris being lifted up into the atmosphere now there is occasionally tornadoes that do occur that are not showing anything on the correlation coefficient because either they're in fields or they're very brief and they happen in between a radar scan so that's just something to keep in mind again do not go ahead and if there's a tornado warning if you don't see anything on the correlation coefficient that does not mean you should go you know that does not mean you should just be upstairs and you know be watching the storm you should really still be in shelter because a tornado can happen in between radar scans radar scans only happen every two to three minutes usually so that's just something to keep in mind as well
I forgot to mention, but in this particular storm, you can see here on the right reflectivity, here's your debris ball. That's where the very tight area of rotation is. Again, very strong inflow going to the storm. Again, that's where the tornado is located. It's kind of on the southern portion of the storm. And again, this is a big cluster of storms, so it's almost embedded in the line of storms. It was very impressive tornado when it did occur, just because of how it was set up embedded in this line of storms. That's it for this tutorial. If you did enjoy this tutorial, I would appreciate if you hit the like button down below. And make sure to subscribe down below and hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications so you you don't miss the latest forecasts and as well as live streams here on our YouTube channel.